Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live right here from inside the main build facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. I'm Tom. We all know him right here. The ladies man, right? There he is. And there he is right there. Ladies man has joined us today on the set and we know the master Bubba. Good morning, Bubba. How are we doing today, man? Doing pretty good. First, I got to get out my black bushings that I'm going to be using here on this next step just black, to prepare myself. Black bushings. Do you want to talk about that? Just hard rubber. Black hard rubber. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That's Bubba's Exotic. It's for the next step. This is for the radiator core support going down. Once I lower the body down, you want to put this between the lower bracket and the upper bracket. So that's what I was, I was just getting ready for next step. Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com with over 20,000 online parts from the biggest names in the world. Turbinetics, Watson Racing, Steeda Auto Sports, Rough Country, ladies and gentlemen. You want to go off road? Rough country is, bub. Suspension's done Bubba style. Nitto tire, ladies and gentlemen. It's all out there. Ladies and gentlemen, the moose is loose down in Abacoa. Girls are going crazy today for the finest in Outlaw Boutique apparel and accessories. It is Miss Outlaw Boutique. Both the girls are there today, bub. I understand Robin and Layla are in Abacoa because all the baseball players are doing their spring training and our ga the games are going on down there. That's right. 561-660-6695, ladies and gentlemen. Get you a direct line into them and you can shop Miss Outlaw Boutique online. Good morning to Code 504 and crew, bub. They're joining us. There's big, big news coming out of their camp, bub. We're going to be talking about this a little bit. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more coming between BEM and Code 504, the S10 conversion people. Good morning to McKenzie and the whole crew out there. Our good friends over at Broward Motorsports, they're out there, bub, riding jet skis in their parking lot right now. Okay. Just keep going, man. And there's just little puddles of like mud puddles over there. All right. Just Did you see going. the one bike that I wrecked and they put on a on a um, a crate over there, bub? That's all. Are you surprised? No, not at all. I, bub, I didn't even get it off the parking lot. Yeah, that's not surprising. They had the insurance agent run out and he had a little tablet in his hand and he goes totaled. I don't know why. You just do it from your phone on an app now. You take a picture and then send it and you get a check. That's what 90% of the world does. I haven't got my check yet. You kick your fender in, you take a picture, you get money. It's that simple. Bub, let's not forget we've got an adjustment. As you know, we will be with Orange County Choppers infamous Joni, Paul Sr., Paul Jr., and Mikey Tuttle on. We were supposed to be there the 15th. Fill us in, Bub. We've had a change. What's the change? You fill me in. The 14th, they have Discovery uh, has moved the date up to the 14th for the unveil. I'm waiting for the time. I just found out about this a few minutes ago, uh, and I understand uh, your good friend Billy Lane is going to be there as well. <laughs> did you did you honestly just say you just found out about this, but you expected me to know? I thought maybe you would talk to the Tuttles before I did. No, not at all. I've seen you so out here like this all day like, long. Yeah, I've been on my my hands and knees grinding away on this kit for the past 40 hours. That's what I've been that, doing. Bub? Yeah. How about that? Bub, let's jump right into this thing. Let's not forget, April 15th is the big, um, what do they call that? Barrett-Jackson auction down here. Yeah, 12th through huge. the 15th. 12th through the 15th. Man, they added an extra day this year, ladies and gentlemen. It's great, great, great time over there. Bub, it's Friday. I know you're happy. You've got your dancing shoes on. I'm just trying to get my work done, man. How about all the baseball players' cars that are in here right now? Too many. How about drinking and driving, Bub? I didn't do it. You want to tell everybody what happened? How innocent people suffer because of other people's stupidity while drinking well, and driving. Well, that's of course obvious. That happens pretty much 99% of the time. One of the players uh, had their car towed in. Yeah, actually he drove it in, didn't he, Bub? Mm -hmm. uh, I can't release the client's name, uh, but his car was hit by his Jeep, brand new Jeep, uh, was at another facility. They did a terrible job, melted down the electrical in this brand new Jeep. Uh, you had to repair that. It hadn't been back in his hands and out of yours for less than a week, and it was hit by a drunk driver. Yep. What kind of damage did it do? Uh, it's going to need a full rebuild of the rear axle, which is pretty surprising because Jeeps can take a pretty solid hit on their uh, drivetrain, but uh, this one's going to need the whole thing, man. It's, there's less than 2,000 miles on this thing. It's brand new. It just shipped in here from the dealer, and uh, you know he's here for spring training. Sure enough, man, it was hit, and now we've got to do both rear axles, rotors, caliper brackets, wheel, um, a bunch of stuff. Don't know if I shared this with you while I was trying to get my dinner down last night. I was talking to the uh, player's wife, um, the police department. I called our connection over there. They dropped off a copy of the yeah, report. Yeah, I already saw that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that the person that hit them had less than ten thousand or ten thousand dollars in uh, collision insurance, and he took out a fire hydrant, a, the client's, uh, uh, your client's car, and he also took a total another vehicle, Bob. So mm -hmm. the ten thousand ain't going to cover it. No, no chance. So be careful, ladies and gentlemen. What you do out there 
is a direct reflection of who you are and you can hurt other people. Bob, we have been building this beautiful S10 conversion. This is a 1953 C3100 that came in for you to do a conversion on. You turn simply to code 504, the leaders in these conversion technologies, Bob. Um, your thought was you wanted to marry this, this build up with Nitto Tire, American Racing, all of the big names that you currently are a partner with in this build. So you turn to code 504, Bob. This is the instruction booklet that we have here. It's a 70 step process, correct? 70 page style? Yeah, 60, uh, 68. 69 so, is just a blank page. I don't know why. 69 is a blank. Well, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put another blank in it and it'll be 70 pages. But let's talk a little bit about this. You've been working on this vehicle since Monday. You did purchase a separate S10 chassis and cab for this build and you stripped that completely and entirely and it left you with a chassis. Yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a big process to do. This is one that, um, you know, we talk about it all the time when it, when it comes to these older cars and people want to do these resto mods, the pro tourings, um, you know, it's a lot more than what people think in terms of change the wheels and tires and magically you have disc brakes, fuel injection, this and that, <laughs> independent suspension. Um, you mean it's not just man, like this? No, never. It's done? So one of the hardest parts about these trucks was originally these were straight six, yes, um, you know, six cylinder engines, That's inline correct. sixes. They were three speed manuals on the column, so you had to shift on the column. Um, it was manual steering, it was manual brakes, it was a, um, I mean, just a poor setup at best. It was nothing more than a workhorse of a truck, and that was its only use. It Ride was not quality fun wasn't to, there, was it? No, it was not fun to drive on the highway. It wouldn't go more than 50 miles an hour. Um, you know, so in today's age, there is no chance that's going to be something that's fun, that you get in, you turn the key, and you just go reliably have a great time all weekend long of cruising, right? Right. So the only way you're going to really do these mods is to, you know, just for example, like the one of the unique parts about these trucks when they're original was the fact that the straight six was used for many years. That engine was a beautiful engine, right? So they were great. They were torquey. They they ran reliable. Originally but, found in this truck, yeah, correct? But when you when you when you start looking at the next pieces in line, right? So your transmission, your drive shaft, your rear axle assembly, your rear suspension, the springs the pan hard rod assembly that was on there. All of these What is components, a pan hard rod, Bob? I'm getting to that. All of these components that were originally on the f anything 47 to 54 in these 3100 pickup trucks were pieces that only went for that year range and they were no easy direct fit out of the box upgrades like you get with today's Camaros, today's Mustangs, like, and I'm talking 60s. You know, if you've got a 68, 69 Camaro, you wanna order this brake kit for it, you just pick up the phone, you call, any freaking number of suppliers now, SSBC, Classic mm -hmm. Performance, Brembo, Bayer, whoever it is you want, you call them, you tell them you want disc brakes for a Camaro, they put it in a box and they send it to you and it's done in a, three days. Well, not so much the case with any of these 47 to 54 3100s because of the fact that they were so unique in their drivetrain style. It was a one piece setup, the rear end, the drive shaft, everything was all one piece, like a wishbone style system. So you couldn't just take and upgrade for example, your transmission. You couldn't just put a four-speed automatic transmission in here, 700 R4. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just put it in and expect it to bolt together. It wouldn't happen. There were severe modifications that had to happen. You would have to get into modifying your transmission, your cross member, the drive shaft. You would have to change the rear end. You would have to put, you know, a GM 10 or 12 bolt in it, or some guys go with Ford. I like to keep my yes, model you do. line specific. Yes, you do. Um, you know, so you start getting into all of these different things where you're looking at like a transmission, then a drive shaft, then a different rear end. Then you're gonna to have to do like a four link sure. style suspension system that allows you to modify and put in a different or newer rear end. Then you're looking at suspension, coilover, springs, leaf springs, coil springs. Sure. You start going down this whole road where it's incredible, right? And then you've taken this, this budget build that's gone from maybe five, 10,000 in your backyard all the way up to 30, 40, 50, mm -hmm. just because of all these other pieces you gotta factor in. And that's not unrealistic to convert one of these trucks into a nice daily driver with a V8 Turbo Hydro 4, uh, 700 R4 transmission plenty of things that you can do to them, but you have to do the kits properly. That's when you turn to people like Code 504, the affordable way and the easy way of modifying this old body style, but allowing you to put all new technology to it in as easy as like off the shelf box components. So you're using an S10 chassis, 118 inch wheelbase. That's a long bed, short cab setup, very simple to do. My preference would be to buy that with a 4.3 liter, which was a factory V6. And this model range was fuel injected, right? The Vortex yes. motor which would have come with a 700 R4 transmission, the drive shaft, the rear end, the 10 bolt rear that's in it, 
all perfect to accept a basic nice 350 cubic inch motor just as a matter of literally pulling out the 4.3, dropping in a 350, and you have a perfect turnkey setup that's reliable and fuel efficient. So I want to go back, Bob. One of the terms you mentioned was a pan hard rod. Let's start there. What is a pan hard rod and what does it do? So that's just the original design of like the 3100 chassis setup. There's, you have to keep your rear end centered. Mm -hmm. And when you have you know, certain pivot points on suspension, something has to keep everything not only centered and straight from front to rear, but also from side to side. Okay. And the pan hard rod is that. It just keeps, it's a bar that connects from the frame to one piece on the rear end that is literally this diagonal arm that keeps everything centered in line under the vehicle. So whether you're going through corners or driving in a straight line, there's no sway going on. Am I correct to assume that different, there are different thickness or different dimension pan hard rods for different horsepower applications? Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, everything from basic stock, there's mild steel, there's chromoly, there's, you know, upgraded chassis specs, there's, I mean, all kinds of things you can imagine. Now, one of the things, Bob, you mentioned was, had this have come with the 4.3 liter, mm -hmm. you could have removed that 4.3 liter and simply dropped a small block Chevrolet engine in its place. Mm -hmm. When you talk about small block uh, uh, displacement, what, does, what number is that, that and below, that designates a small block? Um, in terms of what? In terms of your cubic inch displacement. Uh, I mean, all the way down to like as small as a 283 cubic inch motor, which was like Chevrolet's very first V8 engine back in what, I think the 50s. Yes, they used them in um, a lot of things, didn't they? You know, it was the 283, then there's a 302, 327, mm -hmm. you know, the 305's in yep. there, there's a 350, 350, there's a 383, there's a 400. There are so many different sure. small block style motors that are designed and built all about what you're trying to build, your budget, of course, mm -hmm. with all of these things. But the small block itself ran from 55 to 86. That's the Gen 1 small block. You can take these things, the overall design and shape of them, the mounts, the front to rear them, the sizing, the specs, all of them were identical. So you could literally take any of those motors from that era, 55 to 86, any small block, again, doesn't matter what cubic inch it is, and you could drop it into this style setup and have perfect clearance the way because the, the bottom was designed of, of the block was the same you're saying right it was just were the motor mounts in different positions typically or did they or was uh gm pretty consistent about where they located those no those were uh, on all small block chevrolets they were all the same but on like this one when you go from what's nice is like an s10 chassis anybody in the truck world out there knows that the s10 chassis you can do pretty much any kind of v8 swap in an S10 chassis from, I think, 82 all the way up till 04 when the S10 stopped, right? And that was on like the square body style, the rounded body mm -hmm. style. Um, you could literally take out the factory motors and you could buy motor mounts, long tube headers, you can buy whatever cooling system you needed all to literally just take it out of a box and bolt it right in. That's what makes this swap so fun. It's easy. You can literally pick up the phone. If, for example, the client doesn't like the way that this setup sits when it's done in terms of like its stance, yep. the ride height, he can pick up the phone, very simply call and get for a 99 Chevrolet S10, a set of front springs or drop spindles and a set of you know rear blocks or rear leaf springs, all direct fit for Chevrolet S10s because they've been around in the, you know, the lower truck world for sure. such a long time. He can pick up the phone and get any of those parts and lower the thing and set the stance exactly where he wants, maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inches, wherever he may want. Right now it's already on a 3-3 drop, so this thing's gonna sit really, really nice. I noticed yesterday, Bub, as you were starting to marry up the cab, you brought the cab inside from uh, out uh, on the side of our main building here, uh, main build facility. And I noticed yesterday you were very strategically and technically looking at, you were like, hey dad, if I could get, if I, you know, if we do the American Racing Nitto tire set up, the uh, rally wheel, and it was this wide, and you were literally standing back measuring it up. So you kind of had an idea of what size wheel and tire combination mm -hmm. you liked with this build as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, you get a plenty of room now that you've got a modern style chassis in here, full chassis, front to rear, full box chassis. This setup allows you to now when you drop the bed in the cab back down on this S10 chassis that has now been converted from a bracketry standpoint to accept the vintage style body mm -hmm. and bed, you drop it down, you've got those original wheel tubs that are naturally like 12, 14 inches wide. And now with your inner frame rails being tapered in so much deeper with the brackets that come out, you know, two and a half, three inches off sure. the sides, you have that much more room for wheel and tire depth, which is really cool because you can literally have, if you wanna keep this thing completely stock looking, pick up the phone and get a set of like wheel ventique steely style wheels yep. that look like they were from this era. In this case, it would be painted red with like the Chevrolet chrome center cap with a chrome beauty ring. 
you could get that set up and have them done in like an 18 by 20 or an 18 inch tall by like a 12, 14 inch wide and have a serious dish on the back. So it not only looks very old school and original, but has such a modern style stance and fitment to it. Those wheels and tires are available, ladies and gentlemen, at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Bub, there's been a lot of cutting and a lot of fitment on this chassis. You are a guy, you are considered one of the top three in the world today. There's a reason for that. Every nut and bolt that you put on this vehicle is indexed to turn a north, south, or 12 to 6 position. Then you go through and mark a line across each one of them, just like it was coming down the assembly line. So that if anybody ever touches it, or tries to say that they did something or you did something, blah, blah, blah. You've got evidence that it's not only photographed uh, and documented and written down and documented, but we have the actual indexing of everything itself. Mm -hmm. You also write measurements on these areas as well. Mm -hmm. This is the instruction book, Bub, that came with it. Uh, as we can see right here, Bub, let's talk a little bit about the instructions. Let's talk, Bub, about the pros and the cons of the instruction book. And by the way, we will be joined by the folks over at 504 on uh, tomorrow, Bub, so they can talk a little more technically with you. So let's talk about the code 504 instruction book, the pros and the cons, and then let's rate it one to 10. Yeah, it's, um, you know, like anything, it's, uh, you know, whenever I discuss any new products or product installs, it's all about key thing is going to be instructions. These are companies that have gone out, they've done the research, they've done their homework, they've done the installs. So they would be the most familiar with this process start to finish and they know everything that you're gonna incur as somebody else that's second down the line from doing it, third, fourth, 5,000 down, you know, whatever it is, you wanna make sure that you start in the instructions, have a thorough understanding of them before you even look at doing step one, steps two, step three, all the way through to the very end. So. A lot of great instructions in here, a lot of great tech tips in here. Were they as clear as I would say they should be? Absolutely not. Um, you know you know how I am with instructions. I, I know exactly. Very, You'll read it 10 easily, times. Um, I, I can very easily understand something and then understand exactly how to apply from, you know, words to picture to end product. Like right there in my head, it just kind of flows. There were a lot of times in here where I've had to, you know, pick up the phone and call. And as you know, Code 504 just did a revised version of these instructions. Yes. So I think we do a little bit more modifying and tweaking. Yes. This will be even better than it is now. I, I think, think you're going to talk to their tech people about it, too. Yeah, I think it's great now as it is, um, you know, but there's just a lot of little things that the average end user, um, you know, for maybe a guy that wants to try to do this process over his entire month at his house on weekends alone, you know, it's going to be something that he's going to have a serious struggle with because it's just not as clear as I feel like it should be in terms of, you know, sometimes nuts, bolts, washers, just basics like that. Um, you know, the photographs show certain style washers, but what you get in the hardware kit is totally different. A little different. Right, so you're showing flat washers in all the pictures, you're showing lock washers in all of your hardware. So it's, you know, to just naturally you look at that and it draws like an immediate disconnect. You know, you're not like, okay, well, am I doing something wrong? Did I not get a bag of washers? Did mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Right, so you start questioning from the start. Um, you know, there were a couple things that were, you know, it, it's pretty good. I mean, for, for the most part, you know, measurements, um, you know, one of the things that I personally, I think I mentioned to you was all of the photographs, while they are zoomed in super, super tight, you can yes, see you mentioned this point practice. A to point B, right? So like maybe you need to go from like a measurement of like from the rear leaf spring shackle to the forward mounting hole of like the chassis or the rear box is going to be, I don't know, maybe 11 inches on the center, I think what one of them was. If you go to do that mark, you get a you know you get a small picture that is in the instruction booklet. However, for the average guy that maybe he can't connect the dots between a picture of what he's looking at and then you know have the, he doesn't like have he can't blow set. that up he can't blow that up in his mind and be like oh I visually know exactly sure. what this picture is showing. So it's sometimes better to have not only a zoomed in shot of like you know here's point A here's point B draw this line here and here this is where you're going to drill and mark. Pull back pull back and get something a little bit further that allows somebody to, you know, maybe look at this photograph. A reference point. Right, like am I looking at the driver's side, am I looking at the passenger side? If it's not noted, you know, in, in you know, quotes or parentheses, whatever, um, you know, whatever it is. But I feel like there's, you know, there could be some clarification on a couple things. Will you be um, working with uh, the guys over at 504 to help implement these changes, Bob, so it can take it and put it in a much more layman's term, you think? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think, I think it could definitely be fine-tuned to be a perfect install. You know, it's, uh, I think I've run into, you know, quite a bit of things on the instructions that just didn't help me out a lot that were really good and strong, um, but a lot that also for, for me to have a little bit of a struggle with them to That's a problem, them is, you yeah. being one of the top three in the world today. Yeah. Code, uh, code 504 instructions on this particular cat, not the modified uh, instructions, one to 10. 
Um, I would give it like a six. Six. Yeah. Bub, let's talk about packaging if we can, please. I'm gonna hold up some of the packaging. For, oh, you dick. From bag. code 504. <laughs> God dang it, dude. <laughs> this is some of the, ladies and gentlemen, they're all mixed around now. This is some of the packaging here, bub. We see this is very nicely presented, bub. Mm -hmm. Three eighths inch flat washer <laughs> and shims. Right. Let's talk about packaging on the product. So for example, right? Like, so right now where you're sitting is, let me, and this is part of what I'm getting at with the, in terms of instructions, right? So right now you're holding a bag that is very nicely sealed and really professionally really nicely labeled, done, right? right? Perfect, 100% right 100%. here. 100%. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Now. You ask yourself, why is there an entire bag here right now of 3 8 washers, right, that are not on this chassis and it's completely built? So that should be kind of your first question because the entire install was nothing more than lock washers over here, which you just dumped the entire which bag out the on the table. But Kenrick, you're not surprised I just did that, are you? Our producer shaking his head, no, I'm laughing, Bob. So there are a lot of key pieces, like for example, I would have, um, okay, so how about this? So Rough Country, when you get product from Rough Country, right? Yes for let's say a front suspension lift, a rear suspension lift, a track bar, they will have on like the very first page of instructions, you go to open it, you know, rough country here, you open it, the very first one is hard, you know, hardware. Yes, right? it shows you all your hardware. And it will say out. like, um, it will say this kit, for example, came in four boxes. Um, it would say like box A, which would be uh, rear box, uh, you know, rear bed mounts, right? So then under that rear bed mounts tab would be, you're gonna have 12 3 8 flat washers, 16, you know, 3 8 uh, lock see. nuts, yeah. uh, 16 3 8 by one inch bolts. It'll tell you, you know, individually break it down and tell you exactly what hardware you're gonna need under, we, you know, which component you're doing versus- Ah, uh, so I see, Bob, maybe you're a, saying- Just a random bag of, you know, 150 bolts where you just take them and you just kind of have to piece through it by sort of what the instructions say. Some of them not clear, some of them a little clear. Um, but there are a lot of, you know, from a hardware standpoint, that was probably one of the biggest struggles. So you could say, in other words, let's itemize up front mm -hmm. here, all of your bags and, and components in the packaging, uh, the packing slip, because the packing slip does itemize what's in that box, right? In terms of bracketry, yeah, yes. but not hardware, which is kind of key. Okay, so now, from, now let's make sure that uh, we include in the instructions what bag or what components mm -hmm. go with this step. Right. Very good. Okay, Bub. Good, good, good. Tech tip, ladies and gentlemen. So that's something we will talk about. Bub, let's talk about the bracketry cutting. Okay, first of all, packaging, one mm -hmm. to 10. 10 out of 10 on packaging. 10 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody's got room for improvement. This is not negative. We're just saying mm -hmm. these are the things you have encountered. Let's talk a little bit, Bub, about bracketry. I hold here in my hand the radiator mount, correct? Yeah, that's a, uh, for the front end, for the core support, yeah, and the inner fender liners. Let's talk, Bub, a little bit about, oh my God, how sharp are these, Bub? Will I cut my hand on these? You will, yes. Yes. Somehow. Yes. Um, so the brackets, the quality of the product you get, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, the, the quality of the products there, the hardware is there, the bracketry is there, it's laser cut, it's, uh, you know, the bends are dead on. Um, you know, every bracket, if there were two brackets that were designed to bolt together and like channel the factory frame, the S10 frame, every one of them lined up without a single flaw, which is perfect. But um, let's talk about then, as we move from the bracketry, let's talk about the, the edges. Are they sharp? Do they cut your fingers? No, they're, uh, they're you know, being laser cut, they're fairly smooth edges, of course. It's anytime you're working with steel, you can cut yourself no matter what. You're very careful um, about that. 40 no, no, hours I got like in this. 40, and 40 something cuts from this one. The, so you're very cautious about the way you do things. Uh, and I noticed you have not done any cutting to your hands, but you're very careful about, you're a very safe young man. You, you always wear protective safety uh, wear. Let's talk about, Bub, safety wear versus not me. So what kind of safety uh, equipment did you use on this build? Um, so key is going to be anytime you're working with grinding, cutting, you know, you want to be working with eye protection, most importantly, um, gloves as well. You know, when you're working with hot products like that, I mean, things get hot and they get hot really fast. This one required a pretty hefty skill set and tool set in terms of what it takes to remove a lot of the factory S10 style components and to drill and modify for the new style components. Now, granted, this is a true bolt on kit. So a lot of the assembly is done with nothing more than basic hand tools, right? So at the end of the day, the end user, if you got you know, a 9 16 and a 3 quarter inch, you can probably pretty much roll through this whole kit with basic hand tools. It's gonna take you a long time. I use air on a lot of them and then torque them all from there. But 
when you go to strip the original S10 chassis, this one again, 118 inch wheelbase, when you go to strip all these factory components, the leaf spring mounts, the shock mounts, the spare tire carrier, the cab brackets, all of those components are factory riveted on the way GM built these frames. So can the average guy get to those rivets and stuff, bub, from uh, his garage with just a hand, a metal handsaw. No, you're not going to do it with a handsaw. Um, you'd want to use a, you know, either a cutoff wheel, a grinder. Um, I pretty much use a four-inch cutoff wheel and a four-inch grinder on all of my prep work to get the frame stripped and down to step one of assembly of the Code 504 swap kit. Um, was pretty much all four, you know, four-inch grinder and uh, cutoff wheels just to get everything stripped. Uh, a lot with a plasma cutter, you know, a lot of guys don't have those at their house, but I'll tell you what, that definitely saved some serious time in terms of cutting yes, off did. a lot of the factory welded on brackets instead of the bolted on, you know, or the pressed on style rivets for suspension components. When you start doing the factory brackets that were on this frame, it was a lot of plasma cutting. There were inner welds on it, which are a lot harder to access. So once you do those things and you can safely do them, if you have the right tooling, again, you have a plasma cutter, you can slight, you know, just lightly cut through all of those welds without blowing through the frame rail so you have a huge giant hole in the frame rail. You can do it just taking time with the proper tooling and then you can grind it all in from there. And of course, we're gonna send all this off and have it coated in a black textured undercoat so it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. So, Bub, you would say that the tooling required for this is not your basic Sears Craftsman set? No, definitely, uh, you, you'll wanna have some pretty heavy duty hand tools and uh, you know some heavy equipment. I mean, the, the worst thing I had to use was the, uh, the plasma cutter. And I mean, of course, you don't have to use that, but man, if you try to use it with just a basic grinder in your hand to grind all those factory welds, it's gonna take you some time. You're gonna get really frustrated. What's beautiful is, Bub, you allowed me to work on a little bit of it. Your cuts with the plasma cutter are exponentially different. Yours are very round and smooth. Mine looks like one of Jerry's kids did it. This it is has true. peaks and valleys, Bub. Yeah, it took me a lot of cleanup after he was done with one cut. I also did some great while it was up uh, on the in the air, Bub. I want to thank the garbage guys out there dumping the uh, the, uh, the, the well, it's, you know what's funny, dude, is I had two two people today that one of our guys comes in at 11, right? And he does a full roundup of the shop. And two, we have trash every Friday. So both of these guys come every Friday. So they typically come at three. I don't know what it is, but the first guy, instead of coming at 11, came at like 8.15. The second guy, now. It's out there. Coming at 11.30, 11 .30 instead 30. of three. Absolutely. I but swear. Let's talk about when it was up in the air, and then I want to get to the frame itself. I was able to get some great pictures. You even had to catch me while I was taking one of them uh, as I was coming down off the, off the uh, lift. It's just getting ridiculous, man. Like, I feel like you just need to, if you're going to be in the shop, you need to just come out here on like a rolling office chair and stay in it. Like, that's it. That's a wheelchair. But it's kind of a rolling office chair. Not really. No? So it's just bad. You said, don't even put your, don't rest your foot up there on a tire that rolls, Dad, and try to catch pictures. I, there's just no connection anymore between you and safety. It's bad. It's really bad. And I just, it's, uh, man. It's not that bad. It's really bad. Paul Sr. thinks it's this funny This guy too. literally, at, at six and a half feet in the air, I have the chassis all the way up in the air, so six and a half feet above me, right? You can tell this is Challenger's 18 foot post, high post lift. So I have this thing all the way up in the air and he wants to take a picture of me grinding on the bottom of the chassis while I'm cutting off one of the bed mounts or something or the cab mounts. I'm, I'm doing it and he's literally, he's standing on the tire, the, the front left tire trying to take a picture. Like he's a, like a freaking mouse on a wheel. I was like, why are you standing on that? It's gonna roll. It's a freaking wheel, it's gonna roll. Is there any connection at all with safety? No. So what does he do? He falls from six and a half feet and I catch him like a freaking mermaid falling out of the sky, dude. Falling through the end of the, through the chassis. Larry, Larry says Tom will wreck the chair. Yes, good morning, Larry Somehow. Williams, the official upholstery facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Larry said he misses our daily chats, Bub. Larry has no idea what we've been going through here. Um, Bub, we have a big announcement we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Uh, actually, two big announcements, Bub, we're gonna be talking about. Bub, I wanna talk about the beauty of your work here. We have had people stop in to see the quality of what they've seen here. In fact, our landlord next door is a professional uh, uh, drag racer. Uh, he's built cars all his life, knows a little bit about uh, machining, knows a lot about meticulous work, and he loves the quality of what you've put together here, man. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it turned out solid, man. Overall, the install is pretty good. It's, uh, you know, today is Friday. I've been on this eight hours a day for the past five days, so everybody can put it together. That's 40 hours just into getting this chassis ready, and you can see I haven't even dropped the cab onto this yet. This was literally minutes before we went live, just so you guys could see it. 
that now it is down to coming together. I will do a final mock-up, then take everything back apart again to do full coating on it. So it does take a lot of time, 40, 50 hours plan for it, and that's with pretty good skill set. Um, so maybe even longer than that just to do this kind of conversion. But again, it's direct fit at the end of the day, and it allows you for a lot of expansion in terms of power disc brakes, you have power steering, you have a V8 direction. swap, you have a four-speed automatic overdrive transmission, you have a solid 10-bolt rear axle in here, you can put a posi traction setup in it, you can lay down 450 horsepower, all while looking like a 1954 C3100 in a matter of, you know, a couple, three, four weeks time. And, and in this instance, Bob, you did build a small block Chevrolet. I did, it's gonna uh, look pretty cam, good there. GM cam kit and everything like that. It's really, really yeah. nice, Bob, very nice. Bob, there's some big things going on I wanna talk about as we move out of this segment. All together, Bob, we'll show the finished product beginning of next week. I do have McKenzie and one of their techs on, I believe Chris is his name. They will be joining us on the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast from 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe they come in there at the 9, 9.20 segment tomorrow, Bob, and we're going to get technical. You're going to uh, talk about things that you loved about this build and how it worked. Just the whole nine yards. We're going to go over this whole build. All right. It's going to be fun, isn't it, Bob? Yep. So next, Bob, will be the cab going down, right? And then the bed fitment, correct? Yeah, I think next is going to be uh, getting my black bushings out, my hard black rubber bushings. Yes, the hard black ones. Yeah, I'm going to get those back out, and I'm going to go ahead and get those sitting on top of the cab mounts, lower the cab down onto it, and get all of that mocked up, get it shimmed, get it sitting level. Um, you know, one of the most important things from there is making sure all your tire pressures and sizes are correct, Push, yeah. because that will also change the way the vehicle's sitting as well. Wow, interesting. Don't just keep throwing different shims in the left front because your tire's at 12 pounds. So that, good point, Bob, very so, good point. So, you know, you wanna go through and, you know, make sure little stuff like that's done. I will step back, I will eyeball it, I will visualize it, I will measure it, I will get it over on the frame machine and check it all out there. Then once the body is done and everything is perfect and I have all my measurements and marks sitting, there's a couple pieces I've got to lock down, like on the rear cab mount, I've got to actually drill. Once everything's sitting right, there's a final hole that you drill to lock everything in place so it can't ever move or flex over the years. And then I'll go ahead and move on. Once that's done, I'll move into the next piece. We'll all carry the bed in here and put the bed down on it and measure that, level it out. And then I'm down to like running boards, final coating, and start putting the sucker together. So that's literally like a key, like a lot a key that goes through that hole that you'll drill yeah. so that it never flexes because they give you code 504 thought it through enough to give you that that 1 inch worth of space. Like for example, I've got an entire section of 516 bolts. No idea where they go. Well, I'll just put them here. Nothing in there that said anything about 516. So I've got this whole sack then right we'll here. We'll talk about that. Did you say sack? Yeah. Does that go with your hard black? Yeah, a sack full of 516 hardware. Oh, okay. Haven't yeah, used it yet. Okay. But we have a huge announcement moving out of this segment. We will be with Code 504. Join us tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. But let's talk about the big, big, big announcement of the new contract that has been signed. Uh, we are officially allowed to speak in detail about it. Uh, your number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast has been bought out by a company called... Podcast One. Podcast One, ladies and gentlemen, were, it was founded by the original founders of Westwood One Radio, who, as we all know, is the world's largest radio syndication firm ever to be developed. They have dominated. Norm and Greg broke out. Norm stayed in Beverly Hills, California. Greg stayed in New York. They approached us and asked us to please come over with the likes of Laura Ingram from Fox News, Shaquille O'Neal, Adam Carolla. Uh, I, oh, the list just goes on and on and on. They were very, very, from a compensatory standpoint, Bob, they were very fair with us, putting us at the top of the list. Um, and we are winding down over at Blog Talk Radio. Yep. How do you feel about that? Looking forward to it, man. We'll see if it uh, if it comes forward, you know? It, we're ready to go. I think we launched the new show when? 1 April? 1 April? The 1st uh, of April? I don't, I don't know what, this, what think, the date is. I think is. the 1st of April. Uh, our uh, in-house uh, producer, Kenrick, who keeps us all in front of the world and takes care of everything you see out there with us, has been working very hard with the guys over there around the clock uh, up through last night as well. I know the landing page is built. Um, it has the latest episode with Paul Sr. and his wife from last weekend on it already, mm -hmm. Bub. Mm -hmm. um, we're finalizing a couple pictures uh, and a video, a very, very good video that Kenrick shot. Look at our Facebook page. You'll see that of the header right there, Bub. There's a lot of really good stuff coming. They have their in-house. They have an in-house talent booking uh, 
uh, department, so we'll be booking the talent we want. We're going to have the guys from ZZ Top on. They're big car guys. All kinds of good people joining us, bub. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's exciting, isn't yep. it, man? Super, super exciting, bub. So we're going to wrap up this segment here on Friday, bub. We want to give a big shout out to the guys over at Code 504. I suspect we're going to be seeing a lot of very custom things coming out of you and Code 504. <coughs> yeah. I think it's going to be pretty exciting, Bob. Yep, we're looking forward to it. Are you ready? Something going to wind up on the SEMA floor, you think? Oh, yeah, we got a few things planned for SEMA. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The master's telling you that's what's going to happen. Until tomorrow, Bob, let's just keep on doing it. Bubba style. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the number one rated internationally syndicated daily motor street, uh, sports live stream. It's Friday, and we're going to jump out of this thing. Join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. for the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports podcast, where Kenrick, Bub, and I will be in-house. It will be, we are approaching our final week with Broad Talk Radio as we move platforms over to Podcast One. This is a big move, ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of support behind it. So you're going to see some very big changes. We've been working on those behind the scenes for the last two and a half, three weeks, relentlessly around on the clock. We are also working with another media company to do a network and television, a network television and digital show as well. And we're going to keep you posted on that. It won't be long before that news is dropped. Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, ladies and gentlemen, that's Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com, 20,000 online parts. On our catalog, the biggest names like Borla, Steeda, American Racing, Nitto Tire, Code 504 will be loading it up out there, ladies and gentlemen, so people can go out and do these exact same things, and we give you an industry best price guarantee. The Moose is Loose down in Abacoa, ladies and gentlemen. Robin and uh, the amazing Layla Von Athey are down there. The former supermodel are down there in Abacoa. Check them out, 561-660-6695, or on the web at Miss Outlaw. Boutique. How about that? Code 504, they are S10 conversions done Bubba style. Let's not forget Amer uh, that uh, the Barrett Jackson auction is going to be in town 12th through the 15th here in the beautiful South Florida area. Nothing compares to the paradise of this area. And the big Orange County Choppers unveil. When you see this bike, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to blow you away. We're not allowed to talk about it. The non disclosure agreement does not allow us to, but I can tell you it's something you've never seen come out of the boys up in. Newburgh, New York, Paul Sr., Paul Jr., and Mikey combining their talents as one, again, as a family, to bring you the best of the best in that two-wheel market. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure we reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner today. If somebody's hungry, buy them a meal, man. A power bar right there at 7-Eleven or the Sitco on the corner and a muscle milk, that's real good stuff, man. That's protein for you. If somebody has holes in the bottom of their shoes, make sure you give them a pair of your stilettos from your trunk. I know some of you guys are walking out around there. Larry Williams, I think, wears stilettos. He's leading more than one life, isn't he, Mr. Producer? We, we, we yeah, mm -hmm. see, our producer's laughing because he knows some of the inside track as well. And let's open the door for somebody, ladies and gentlemen, whose hands may be full. We've been entrusted with some beautiful animals in our lives. Trust me, they bring us a lot more happiness than we probably bring to them. Let's make sure we take care of them responsibly. Get them to the vets. Make sure their vaccinations are right. Don't ever abuse an animal. Don't raise your voice or your hands to an animal. Give them all the love in the world. And they'll turn out like the ladies man right there. And he gets more attention than we do. Till tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Let's all keep on doing it Bubba style. Bubster, hey, you want to go eat?